In this demo, we'll see how to create and manage security tokens using the Polymath Token Studio on Polymesh. To use the Token Studio on Polymesh, we'll need the Polymesh wallet with an account associated with a Polymesh ID with PolyX to pay usage fees. Here we'll connect our Polymesh wallet. And you can see I've created a few security tokens in the past. I also have a reserved ticker symbol where I have not yet configured that security token. For this demo, let's go ahead and create a new security token. And as we're going through this demo, it's important to note that the token we're creating is on testnet, so it's for test purposes only and it has no economic value. You can see here we're using the Polymesh testnet. However, the process is very similar when on mainnet. Let's reserve our security token ticker symbol. and Maybe we want to reserve something like the corp token. And this error message pops up and it says, sorry, this ticker symbol is not available. And so because someone's created the corp token in the past, no one can create the corp token in the future. So we have a unique naming system at Polymath, which means I'll have to use a new unique ticker symbol. Let's try ABC. And so we can see the ABC ticker symbol is available. So let's go ahead and reserve our ticker symbol. And you can see this comes at a usage fee of 2,500 PolyX. We'll confirm. And we'll enter our wallet password here to sign the transaction with our wallet. Success, we've reserved our ticker symbol. And we can see on the left-hand side here, there's a countdown clock for 60 days. So you have 60 days to go from ticker symbol reservation to token creation. And so let's say I did not create my token within that 60 day window. Well then ABC as a ticker symbol becomes available for others to use. But if I go ahead with token creation, I have nothing to worry about and the ABC ticker symbol is mine. I'll put in my security token name, we can just call it the ABC token. What type of asset is our token? Maybe it's a common equity, maybe it's a preferred equity, a REIT, a revenue share agreement, etc. or maybe something custom. Let's just say it's a common equity. We can also input a security identifier, so something like a QSIP. We can specify an assigned funding round if we wish. Let's say this is our Series A. And we can also specify token divisibility. So do we want our token to be indivisible or divisible? If our token is indivisible, then token holders can only hold whole numbers of tokens. So they could only hold, for example, four or five tokens. They couldn't hold 4.537 tokens. However, if we make it divisible, token holders could hold 4.83674 tokens, for example. And this maybe is just a preference of our company, or it, maybe it's something that our lawyers or our broker dealer has instructed us to do. And finally, we can input a reference type into the token. So something like a private placement memorandum, maybe subscription agreements. You can think of it as being burned into the token. So when someone comes across this token on a block explorer or maybe an exchange, they can actually see this data embedded into the token itself. It's a very handy way to allow token holders or potential token holders to see this information. And of course, let's say we make it something like our website slash PPM. We can make sure that this web page is behind a password so that anyone who wants to look at the PPM, they actually have to contact us, the security token issuer, in order to get access to it. We'll go ahead and add that reference. And then we'll configure our security token, which you can see comes at a fee of 10,000 PolyX. We'll confirm and sign two transactions here with our wallet. And we can see here we were successful in configuring our token. Let's head over to token management. We'll take a look at some advanced token configuration. Let's say in a scenario where we as the token issuer, we created a token, but now we have to give complete control of that token to someone like a transfer agent. Well, here we just get the transfer agent's Polymesh ID, and we very quickly and easily can transfer ownership of the token to the transfer agent. We can also very easily disable all transfers of the token. Perhaps there is a big announcement coming out and we need to pause transfers, or maybe we need to make changes to our token for whatever reason. We can very easily disable transfers, make the announcement or make the change to the token, and then re-enable transfers after. Let's head over to the compliance tab so we can manage the compliance rules for our token. Implementing compliance rules for a security token is very, very important. It's what allows us to automate a lot of the compliance rules in not only the primary market, but also the secondary market, ensuring that only those who are allowed to hold the token can in fact hold the token. And so let's implement one of these rule templates we have here on the left side. Let's say that all the receivers of our token must be KYC verified. They're either an affiliate or exempted or accredited, and they cannot be from a specific jurisdiction. So we can see that here with our three conditions. We also might want to enforce buy lockups and sell lockups. And let's say that the holders of our token cannot be from, just for demo purposes for this example, the United States. And here in just a few seconds, we've implemented some very important rules for our token. So that technology is taking care of who can and who cannot hold our token. You see we have conditions one, two, and three.
but we can also edit these conditions at any point in time in the future. So perhaps we need to add a new condition, perhaps we need to delete one of these conditions. It's completely modular. So as your company changes, as your security token changes, as potentially regulations may change, you have the ability to at any time update the rules associated with your token. Let's go ahead and submit these changes, confirm, and sign with our wallet. There we go, we see this rule is now active. So all the holders of our token must be KYC verified, they must be accredited, an affiliate, or exempt, and they cannot be from the US. Now that we've set up our rules, let's add an approved attestation provider. In order to qualify who can and cannot hold our security token, we need attestation providers to make attestations about potential investors and potential token holders. Those attestation providers will specify things like jurisdiction, buy lockup, sell lockup, whether that user is an accredited investor or not, and more. But as the issuers of ABC token, we don't want to trust just any attestation provider. We want to approve certain attestation providers who we trust in making those attestations. So maybe one of the attestation providers is ourselves, the issuer. Maybe one is a broker dealer we're working with. Maybe another one is a KYC provider. And so we'll see what adding those attestation providers looks like. First, I'm going to add myself as an approved attestation provider. Here you can see this is my Polymesh ID, 0x87. You can see in the top right corner, 0x87. This is me, the issuer of the ABC token. And so I'm allowing myself to make all of these different attestations about potential token holders. We'll add myself as an approved attestation provider. We'll confirm here and sign with our wallet. And now you can see that I, 0x87, right, 0x87, I have the ability to make attestations about other Polymesh identities. And you can see I can make attestations about Polymesh identities in terms of their buy lockup, sell lockup, KYC refresh date, jurisdiction, accredited status, affiliate status, exempted status, and if they are blocked or not. And so now that I've added myself as an approved attestation provider, I can make attestations about other Polymesh IDs. And so let's go ahead and do that by going to the attestations tab. And here's where I'm going to add a specific attestation about a potential investor in our token. So I'm going to add a new identity, and I'm going to add it for a single Polymesh ID. However, Using multiple Polymesh IDs, we can upload a CSV file and make attestations about several Polymesh IDs at once. But for the demo, I'm just going to do one for now. And so this is a potential investor in our ABC token. Let's call him Bob, 0x80, dot, 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 dot. Let's say their buy lockup expired a few days ago. A sell lockup, maybe this is a few months from now. Again, KYC refresh date. So at what point must 0x80, aka Bob, refresh his KYC information? maybe a few months from now. What jurisdiction is 0x80 in? Well, let's say for demo purposes, let's say they are Canadian. Are they accredited? Yes, they are, but they're not an affiliate, they're not exempted, and they're not blocked. So let's save that information and make this attestation about 0x80, which is Bob. We'll authorize by signing with our wallet. And here we can see the attestations about 0x80 made by us, 0x87, an approved attestation provider right, 0x80, they have a buy lockup, but it expired a few days ago, a sell lockup, which expires in a few months, KYC refresh date, which is in a few months, they're in Canada, they're an accredited investor, but they're not an affiliate, they're not exempted, and they're not blocked. So because the attestation we've made about this identity, 0x80, fits the compliance rules of our token, they will be able to hold our tokens. However, if we made an attestation about a separate identity, and they happen to be in the US, well, if we remember and we go back to the compliance tab, we can see that we will not allow any holders to be from the US. So you can see how the issuer of a security token or one of their partners like a KYC provider or a transfer agent or a broker dealer, they set the compliance rules for their token and then approved attestation providers make attestations about certain identities. And if the attestations about those identities fit the compliance rules, those users are able to hold tokens. However, if they don't, those users will not be able to hold tokens. Now that we've made attestations about 0x80, Bob, let's go ahead and distribute Bob some tokens. We'll head over to the distribution tab to do that. And now when we're distributing tokens, it's a two-step process. First, we'll need to distribute tokens to what we call the distribution agent, and then the distribution agent will then distribute tokens to Bob. So first, we'll mint the tokens to the distribution agent. Let's mint 1,000 ABC tokens. Sign with our wallet. And now our distribution agent has 1,000 ABC tokens. And of these 1,000 ABC tokens, let's distribute 200 of them to Bob, or 0x80. We can call this the Q1 distribution. 
we'll input Bob's PolyMesh ID there. Although, of course, we could distribute tokens to multiple PolyMesh IDs. For the demo, we'll just do it for one, and we'll distribute 200 ABC tokens. Confirm and authorize. And we can see here the 200 ABC tokens are now in our pending distributions. And if we hover over this yellow icon, we can see this identity must create a UID scope to accept this token. And so one very interesting thing about PolyMesh is we have what some could consider an anti-airdrop mechanism. And when you talk to many financial institutions, a lot of them are very concerned about airdrops. It could create a taxable event that the institution doesn't want, and it also could result in interacting with an entity or with a user that you aren't allowed to interact with. Let's take a brief look at what 0x80 needs to do to actually receive these tokens. And right now we've switched users. So we're looking at this from Bob's point of view, 0x80. And we're looking at the PolyMesh dashboard, which is dashboard.polymesh.live. And here we can see that we have an incoming distribution. It's the 200 ABC tokens that the ABC token issuer has distributed. And so Bob, 0x80, is now going to accept this. This looks correct. We'll click Next. and Just sign here with our wallet. And the UID scope was successfully added. And now Bob, 0x80, he has his 200 ABC tokens. So now let's head back to what the security token issuer of the ABC tokens would see on their screen. So as a reminder, we're now looking as the ABC security token issuer again. Let's refresh our pending distributions. And we can see the balances have updated. The distribution agent has 800 ABC tokens. There are no more pending distributions. Let's refresh the token distributions. And here we can see those 200 ABC tokens are now sitting with 0x80, aka Bob. The final thing we'll showcase in this demo video is access control. Here's where we can manage who can interact with the Polymath Token Studio for the ABC token. And so you can see here there's test 2, which is 5CY, test 3, which is 5DH. Let's head over to our wallet to see what that looks like, right? 5CY. 5DH, that's test two and test three. So we can actually control which of these keys has access to the Polymath Token Studio and what they're able to do inside the Polymath Token Studio. And so of course, this is just interacting with our own wallet and our own keys, but we could do this with other wallets, with other keys. So maybe we want our CFO to have access to certain functionality, or perhaps a transfer agent, or perhaps an exchange, or maybe a KYC provider. This is where we can add those keys and change their access to the Polymath Token Studio in order to perform functions for the ABC token. So very quickly, let's look at adding test two, having access to the token, and maybe we only want them to be able to handle distribution. They're the only key outside of our own that we want to be able to handle distribution to different addresses. We'll submit, we'll confirm, and we'll authorize with our wallet. Success, the access has been updated. So now another key has the ability to use the Polymath Token Studio, interact with the ABC token, and handle only the distribution elements of the ABC token. And that's the end of this demo video showcasing the Polymath Token Studio, how a security token issuer can create and manage a security token. Let's recap what we learned. We saw that as a security token issuer, or as the partner of a security token issuer, maybe a transfer agent, maybe a broker dealer, we can reserve a ticker symbol. We can configure our security token with various parameters. We can then program the compliance rules of our security token. We can add approved attestation providers. Those approved attestation providers can then make attestations about other users of PolyMesh. We can distribute tokens to our investors or our token holders. And finally, we can control who has access to the PolyMath Token Studio and in what capacity. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you saw how easy it was to use the PolyMath Token Studio. If you have any other questions about PolyMath or PolyMesh, you can go to our website at polymath.network. And if you want to try out the Polymath Token Studio on Polymesh, you can go to our Getting Started page.